All right. Um, my uh, research was something that came about uh, because of my, my professional experience as a college professor. And we have heard uh, about the importance of understanding more about the needs of historically underrepresented student groups uh, in the K-12 uh, system. And there is also, as a college professor, I've uh, seen firsthand a uh, need for learning uh, more about this at the community college level as well. And uh, the research that I conducted critically examined uh, the experiences of sick American uh, community college students uh, to explore how their academic progress and success is affected um, by the institutional structure of the community college system in this country. Um, the intersection of sick culture and the dominant culture and also the social interactions that they experience in community college. The literature review demonstrated that all Asian uh, ethnicities tend to be lumped together in educational research and this is very critical because it masks uh, a lot of the difference, differences and different experiences that each of the uh, uh, ethnicities within this large umbrella of Asian American are experiencing. Uh, and this contributes to uh, misconceptions that Asian American students are a problem-free minority uh, and masks the racism that they face. Uh, there is a significant lack of knowledge uh, concerning how American Punjabi Sikh students negotiate the academic, cultural, and social aspects of community college life. And my hope is that this study uh, will spark a great deal of uh, interest in continuing future work and studies uh, looking into filling that knowledge gap as well as with uh, other ethnicities within the Asian American uh, umbrella. Uh, my research questions to this end were, what do uh, six students perceive to be the academic, cultural, and social factors affecting their progress and success um, in the community college uh, system? And uh, it's important to note that the environment in which this research uh, uh, takes place is permeated with the current anti-immigrant political rhetoric and Islamophobia that I'm sure we're all very aware of. Um, uh, six are victims by pro proxy of Islamophobic violence um, and hate crimes since they're often confused with Muslims by the general public. And the effects of this environment uh, on sick American college students can be seen uh, very clearly in my study's findings. Uh, the, the theoretical underpinnings were basically uh, to, to not only utilize critical race theory um, and its uh, variant Asian crit for this particular study, but also to apply and dissect the myths surrounding the model minority theory, which is a theory that, that, was, uh, that has been uh, problematic on a continuous basis for uh, Asian American groups because of the uh, assumptions that it makes about uh, innate aptitudes for uh, success and, uh, and cultural norms of hard work and persistence that are simply assumed to be the case with all Asian American students and which unfortunately have informed a great deal of uh, curricular and policy decisions uh, involving these students over the years. Um, the, uh, the, the Asian crit uh, approach critiques uh, the nativistic racism associated with this model minority concept and it also looks into issues of uh, uh, immigration, assimilation, and language challenges that Asian Americans face, which was a, a very critical part to the study. Uh, my, uh, my research was set at one of the oldest community college systems in California. It's located in a small town in, in uh, the northern part of California and serves a population that includes the largest sick community, concentrated sick community in America. Um, and uh, the, uh, the estimate, current estimate, is around 15,000 uh, uh, sick Americans in this one uh, area that's being served by this school. Uh, I employed a phenomenological research design because I wanted to hear what these students had to say. I wanted their voices and their input on what they're experiencing. And also, if, uh, I've indicated, the data is, is very scarce. There's a huge paucity there. Um, so, so we needed to hear from who is being affected by all of this. And um, I uh, basically established a conversational tone with all of my interviews uh, 
uh, and my protocols so that this would allow me to follow up with and investigate more in depth uh, responses and I got some fascinating responses uh, from these students about what they what they've been experiencing and uh, utilized uh, with my typed verbatim uh, transcripts which again a lot of you who are up and coming for your dissertation soon will experience these kinds of things it was very long in-depth work but but definitely worth it um, and through those those transcripts I was able to apply thematic analysis um, the uh, the summary of the themes I could go on into great detail about this for time's sake um, uh, the summary is basically four academic themes four cultural themes, themes and two social themes closely connected with this stuff is uh, basically the the stories told through these students and obviously I couldn't put all of that on the slides nevertheless I'm going to relate to you uh, some of the quotes because they are really powerful uh, lack of four-year college readiness was was a, was a major factor and that is something that um, it se seems to be an issue that, it, that is, is affecting them that has not really been addressed um, at the k-12 level either through their own experiences so this is kind of an example of how once again, we see how everything kind of connects. Uh, they, they don't learn what they need to learn at the K-12 level. It impacts their ability to perform in at the community college level. Uh, uh, one student said, I didn't know my major at the time, so I figured I, it was uh, a safer choice for me to just go to community college. So it does seem to be that their, their lack of uh, preparedness for four-year work is impacting their decisions on what they're going to do with their future. Uh, the, the language uh, barriers were, were uh, particularly significant. Um, the accent, uh, speaking with an accent, was noted as an issue for, for a lot of students in terms of the, the negative reactions they would receive from, from those uh, uh, interactions. Uh, one student said, when someone laughs at you because of your accent, you just kind of close yourself off. Because, of, uh, because you say a word funny, you tend to close yourself off and not raise your hand in class anymore or become vocal. The reaction to this student's Indian accent uh, is shaming communication um, that inhibits her from par participating in class discussions and asking questions uh, to clarify things that she doesn't understand. And it was interesting to note that, that I also had a number of responses that, that observed vicarious shaming. Uh, that other students, uh, other Sikh, uh, Indian students were, were experiencing, even if they weren't the direct recipients of this hostile behavior, they would see it happening to other students and their, their, their uh, emotion, uh, emotional reaction would be the same. They would close off, they would stop talking, they would stop getting involved. And if we, if we think about the exponential implications here, this is profound because we, we, we're seeing students at, at different levels um, feeling that they're no longer part of the uh, educational experience and closing themselves off from the classroom and the college uh, because the, the impression is that they shouldn't talk. Their accent doesn't fit in with our culture. They, they should be invisible and, and, and they act accordingly. Um, an, another student uh, pointed out that, uh, uh, they, that she has a very difficult time with uh, cultural references that are not uh, within her realm of experience or her background. This, this was um, one particular quote. Sometimes in school, especially high school, they make like biblical references, Christianity references, and I'd never get it, like Adam and Eve. Um, what's that? And Goliath. I'd never get any of these. So I was like, what is that? And they all look at you like, how do you not know that? Right? So the ax keeps coming down. They, the, the shaming keeps popping its head up. Um, the uh, sources of student academic uh, support was a, was a really telling uh, theme. Many students tend to uh, trust their friends and older siblings and family members, uh, particularly their, their friends that are also uh, uh, Punjabi Sikh, um, for, for information and advice more than they trust institutional sources, uh, such as counselors. This was, this was a very startling finding. They, they reported getting misinformation and dismissive treatment from school, from, from some of the counselors. And one student uh, related a, a, an experience that where she said she actually felt foolish for going and trying to interact with 
uh, a counselor. She felt foolish for trying to seek out the, the uh, institutional programs that have been set up to help her. It was, it was a, a very profound uh, statement. She said, she made me feel dumb for even going there again because I was there recently. I made up my schedule with another counselor and I just wanted to double check something. She had the frown with the eyebrows, you know what I mean? She didn't say I was ridiculous, but that's the attitude in her look and tone of voice. That's what that student walked away with. They don't trust the systems. They don't, they don't trust uh, what's being offered to, to help them. And, and this, uh, again, the, you know, the exponential potential for this as they continue to talk to their siblings who have gone through these experiences and who tell them don't trust the system uh, is, is moving them further and further away from help and assistance and uh, the, the kind of support that they're supposed to get in uh, community college institutions. Uh, the interactions with instructors, there were also some very unfortunate uh, experiences related there. And, and although there were some student narratives that spoke uh, extremely positively of interactions with, with, with many instructors, there were also some who, disturbing accounts of teachers who uh, established for these students a hostile environment by not showing awareness of them as, as uh, a, a force or an existence in the course. They're not, they're not seen as uh, having something to contribute. And uh, the, uh, the cultural factors really kind of uh, showed this to, to a large extent as well. Um, the, 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 the assumptions that were relate, related to model minority theory really uh, showed the, 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 stereo, the stereotype that these students have to live with, the, 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 the box that they, they're put into by, by other students and sometimes counselors and leaders. Um, uh, some of these quotes, are, I, I, have to, I have to relate them. Oh, you probably have all A's, and I'm like, no, these classes are really hard for me too. And they'll be like, but you're so smart. And I'm like, how do you know that? You don't even know me. You're just basing that on my appearance. And my personal favorite was a, a, a student that, that related that when he was uh, in, taking a, a math class and he would uh, uh, say that he didn't understand how to do a particular problem, no one would believe him. He was, he was met with disbelief by everyone that, that he would go to to ask for help. Uh, in math class, whenever a teacher does a math problem no one gets, they ask me and I'm like, I don't get it either. <laughs> oh, but you're really good at math, come on, they say. That's definitely why they ask me, because I'm Indian. Um, the parental expectations and, and influence uh, was very telling in connection with model minority theory because it appears that there, there, is, there has been some absorption of, of the model minority, model minority myth. They've had it so uh, reflected to them in, in our society, they've now internalized it to a certain degree. So a lot of times what we would find is uh, uh, that uh, in, in student commentaries is that one, one student said, for example, um, I feel like a lot of Indian parents, my parents included, they pressure their kids to be doctors even if they don't want to be. While I feel like a lot of white parents, they let their kids do whatever they want, like follow your dreams. Whereas Indian parents say, your dream is to be a doctor. <laughs> and there were some exceptions to this, but by and large that was uh, the message that I was I was getting um, when I would a I would ask them what is your major and how did you come by that major uh, invariably the answer would reflect uh, parental and cultural expectations oh well I, I I my parents gave me a choice I could be a doctor or an engineer that was, some student actually said that yeah and there was another student who chose a business degree and related that it was uh, a very disheartening experience, but she finally persuaded herself to do it because it was mostly acceptable. So, um, you know, the, 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 the difficulties they're facing in being able to pursue their own interests are, are very strong here. Um, significant cultural values, family, familial connection, respect, financial security. Uh, six students expressed close emotional ties with their parents. Um, one student describes it as a different level of connection. And many live in multi-generational households, which again doesn't fit the stereotypical expectation of the current American household. 
we're not supposed to have four generations in a household is unthinkable. Not to these students. Um, the, uh, they speak Punjabi to their grandparents at home, but they don't dare say a word of Punjabi when they get uh, to campus. Um, that, that familial connection is what keeps them uh, connected to that language and their cultural heritage. That's, that's what does it. They don't get that at college. Um, and students discussed uh, two kinds of respect, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, receiving respect for their beliefs from non six and uh, showing respect for elders, which they uh, see as something that, that, that completely separates them from American society. Their view of uh, white students, for example, is that there is no such respect, there is no such connection, uh, I must be an alien. Right? Um, students uh, stress the idea of the link between education and financial security. This was a big deal to them. Um, they, they've internalized the idea that, they, that when they're here, what they need to be doing is thinking about how they're going to use this to get a job. And so, that, so there's a tremendous stressor on them from that point of view. Uh, the cultural accommodations and adaptions were uh, largely uh, not only in the uh, area of adaptive behaviors, but also personal appearance. A huge uh, cultural trademark that, that the students perceive, at least as a, as a cultural trademark, is whether or not with male students they cut their hair and wear a turban. So uh, all of the students, all of the male students that I interviewed had uh, chosen to cut their hair and not wear turbans. Um, and one student actually described the turban as a red flag. That was his way of categorizing, categorizing it. Uh, and uh, another one said that it's used to identify whether or not you're a terrorist. Um, students described adjusting their behaviors to fit cultural context, kind of with what we've seen here. Their impression of uh, American culture is to be uh, very loud and, and, and very uh, jovial and, and uh, a bit cocky, as they describe it. Um, and one student says, with sick people, you have to be more respectful, quiet, more reserved. Many student comments suggested that the concept of double consciousness was something that these students live with uh, regularly. They have two personalities. They, they have the personality that's what they have at home, and then they have the college campus personality which is what they described as Americanized, and most of them indicated a, a sense of it feeling like a false identity, like, they, you know, that, like it wasn't who they really were, but they also accepted it as part of life, at least college life. Uh, one student described the effects of experimenting or experiencing double consciousness and racism on her. She said, I'm not embarrassed by being sick, but I'm not really into it either. I feel like I'm more turned off by the culture because I've faced so many negative experiences because of it. It's not all negative, but the things I've had to go through regarding it have just put me into a point where I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Uh, the social factors primarily concerned with relationships and uh, uh, fears for uh, family safety and security. So with, with social relationships, a lot of uh, microaggressive behavior, sh uh, shaming communication would be experienced in the form of jokes with these students. Uh, uh, they would, in other words, they would experience with other students uh, uh, a microaggression that was couched as a humorous remark. Um, we are sharing our careers. Um, we were sharing our careers in class. It was a career planning class. And this guy said, oh, you're planning to have a career. Don't most Indian wives sit at home? Yeah. Um, and uh, then there was uh, the ever-present disconfirmation, which um, ties, it, ties in a bit with model minority, again, that, that uh, um, a, an individual's uh, worth would be uh, diminished in terms of who he, he or she is. Um, and one student commented that there are some times when I've had a question about a class or something, and I tried to ask a white student, and they would just not talk to me and ignore me because it wasn't necessary or relevant. They don't value me, they don't want to talk to me, it makes me feel uncomfortable and a little bit angry too. So they're, they're literally being disconfirmed. Um, uh, Micro-invalidations, including behaviors that reject or invalidate the experiences of targets of bias, in this case, um, uh, students. 
Uh, one of the uh, students said that she was asked if she had trouble with English because she was not American. And she said, I was so shocked. I was born and raised in America. My parents are American citizens. So it's like everyone in my family is American. She didn't know how to deal with that, um, that perception. Uh, the, uh, the racism and concerns for personal safety took on some, some really startling forms. All of the students related uh, concerns about this to, to uh, uh, mostly to greater degrees. Uh, because of my religious beliefs, I feel some fallout from racist issues facing racism. That's a big fear in my mind. So I'm like really cautious when I walk through the halls and things. Another student commented, my parents listen to this Punjabi radio station and they talk about a lot of racism. My dad wears a turban and I don't want him to ever get jumped. Like I read about Sikhs being victims of hate crimes and I hope that never happens to my dad. When I hear about it, hate crimes against Sikhs, I feel awful because that could be my parents and they're peaceful people. The, the summary of microaggressions is pretty lengthy in my paper, but these are some of the, the more pointed uh, pointed, pointed areas, discrimination by counselors in the academic arena, racist remarks from instructors, shaming by others for accents or unfamiliarity with cultural uh, touchstones, cultural uh, references, uh, cultural issues with the, uh, the model minority assumptions, disrespect for practices, uh, invalidation of inter-ethnic differences. So they're being invalidated, uh, their, their uh, cultural practices are not respected, um, uh, one student related a, a, a comment that was said by another student that made her want to leave the classroom, and that was that they thought that anyone who didn't eat beef was stupid. Um, so uh, a lot of disrespect for cultural practices, a lot of issues with the model minority assumptions. Oh, just do the math problem. You must be good at it, right? We can tell just by looking at you. Um, and one student said, because of my religious beliefs, I feel that I cannot uh, connect with with anyone else. They assume that I'm different. They assume that I'm a terrorist. I can't talk to anyone, right? So, it's it really is uh, an issue of, of difficulty. Also, with uh, the social issues, the unwelcome jokes, the micro invalidations, and the hate crimes uh, in particular. The 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 micro assault. There was one story, a uh, student related to me of stopping at a gas station. She was dressed uh, in traditional uh, Sikh clothing, going to uh, a festival. Uh, Sikh festival, and uh, a person actually approached her and told her to leave the country. Never physically touched her, but um, uh, told her that she didn't belong there, and her response was, I'm American, I was born here. If I went to another country, they would tell me to leave. Um, so, the, the policy recommendations that came out of this really uh, focus a lot on not only uh, what we can do to make the institutions more mindful, but also uh, what leaders can do to make uh, staff more mindful, counselors more mindful, and how leaders can become more mindful as well. So uh, professional development courses was uh, definitely a, a strong finding. Uh, we need to be able to inform instructors and counselors about cultural backgrounds uh, of their six students and the linguistic and uh, other uh, content challenges that these students face in the classroom and, and help them to understand why uh, it disconnects the students from the class experience. Uh, to address the question of model minority theory and its uh, stereotypes, uh, it would be uh, an important thing to do to encourage participants to re-examine their uh, assumptions, what, what they think of is true for a typical Asian American student. Uh, curriculum review is definitely needed so that we, we can address how, how curriculum can be updated to fit this part of our 21st century student body into uh, the 21st century experience of uh, going to uh, college in this country. Um, review of counselor training and practice to address problems six students have with counselor access, misinformation, inadequate information, rude and dismissive treatment, which again was a common theme that I found. Um, they need to learn to be able to trust the system. That can't be done if the system isn't trying to find out what they need. Uh, targeted counseling for six students to address psychological stresses that they, they are facing, 
uh, as a result of the double consciousness that they have to put on, uh, the, the, the college white hat uh, that they have to put on every day, you know, the, the, the feeling that, they, that they, uh, they themselves don't really exist, they themselves are invisible, so they have to put on a costume. Um, and, uh, and promoting awareness uh, uh, through, through the use of uh, tutoring, but basically uh, for students who might have benefited from this, and this is not only um, uh, students, uh, uh, six students who, who need, uh, uh, you know, extra help and assistance, but also tutoring for non-six students to help them understand um, what the what the what the needs of six students are, and make them aware of their unconscious uh, biases, their unconscious racism. You know, this this certainly would help uh, with students uh, who have uh, unconscious uh, um, bias, right? Uh, commit to colleges as safe zones. The, it, the fear is, is the biggest barrier for these students. The fear that they don't belong, the fear that they're in a society that doesn't accept them, uh, that is reinforced uh, by what their, their siblings tell them, by what their sick friends tell them, by the experiences that they have with uh, uh, students of other ethnicities, by the experiences that they have with the representatives of the system, by the experiences that they have when they turn on the television and they see uh, uh, people that look like them portrayed as bad people or evil people. All of these things are combining together to push this ethnicity. And I believe if further studies were, were conducted on other Asian ethnicities, other Asian ethnicities like Muslim Americans as well, out of uh, our system so that they, they, so that they truly do become invisible. So. Um, these are uh, some of the policy recommendations that uh, I focused on in my paper. There were um, others as well, but uh, at, at, uh, at its most important level, all of these things need to be discussed and integrated and understood by leaders, faculty, staff, and policymakers. <laughs>